All right, so we have it installed. These vents, they work up and All right, what's up guys? I've been a little absent because I moved to a new house. So I've been moving a lot. Big garage, very nice. Today we're gonna be doing something a little bit special right here. We have a Subaru Legacy, what year is this? 11. 2011, and we're gonna be installing the iDoing radio. You know iDoing has been amazing. Check out these Crocs, they look cool too. But iDoing, it has the whole silver, silver trim around. Then you have the head unit itself. We have GPS antennas, um, all that harnesses over stuff right there. So we're gonna start by removing the OEM unit and then putting in the new one. Should be a simple install and um, yeah, it should be straightforward. So we are inside. We have the OEM unit, of course. You have this nice silver trim. So I guess a new one, we'll try to kind of match it, but this is more, this is silver right here, but the actual, this piece is like a brush aluminum. All right. Uh, the removal should be easy. Just clips holding this trim here. And just yank it. Oh, you just pull the whole thing out. It's easy. Yeah. No screws, be, huh? Be cautious. You may need. You may end up breaking things. So a little pry tool may help. Wow. There you go. It's that easy. Holy. Yeah. So these plastic clips. I think you will need to remove them. Yeah, we were going to be transferring transfer these, to the one. these ones to the newer ones. And the lens. And also, the we're going to be uh, transferring... <laughs> this piece of gun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to be transferring the bottom piece over to the new trim piece as well, as, as well as the vents. To so remove the uh, this, it's just four screws. Four of that screws. Yeah, so Super we'll easy. remove that right now. Oh yeah, you are. <laughs> oh, you already got them. I got two easy ones. There's a ground one. Not too bad. So let me um, tell you what plugs that we unplugged. Um, this looks like a uh, around like a 28 pin and a 12, maybe a little bit more than 12 pin. But these three, and then we had to remove this bottom one. This one looks like a radio antenna. Yeah, I think the same thing. So. We'll see if the new one has a radio antenna because that is, I've never really seen this super use this cord before, so. All right, so we have the brains of the unit. Looks like there's a micro SD slot right there. The, like an IDE cable, but that's where it's gonna be plugging into the screen. Nothing over here. And this is where all the magic happens. This has the super harnesses right inside of it. Now it says WRX Forester X5. But uh, I think the X5 might be like a cross track. Uh, but this is a Super Legacy, and we're just gonna make sure everything works. And uh, yeah, you can see all the pin layouts. On the left here, we have where the red little, these are covers, GPS and 4G, 4G. So um, the Wi Fi antenna most likely is gonna be on a wire, not on like an antenna. You do, we do have the adapter for the bottom right, right here, bottom left where my pinky is. That's gonna be for your AM, FM. And these right here are gonna be accessories like USB cables, um, where you're gonna plug in the Wi-Fi, and if you wanna have the 4G module, uh, backup camera and all that stuff, uh, we have uh, that capability. Moving on to over here, we have nothing. Bottom would be a wire diagram. Let's see if I can show you guys this just in case. You need a reference to that. Check it out. And then the top is uh, just like a UPC code. All right. So let's start plugging it in and hopefully it will work. <laughs> Should work. Should work. So we just plug it into the back and match. Now these these wires, they don't go very far out, so I'm not, I might not be able to show you guys clearly, but you just plug in what fits. Um, uh, yeah, just try to plug in what fits. All right, so for this, we only have one of them plugged in. 
this is probably the ground and this is most likely uh, like aux or steering wheel controls. Generally the three wires, four wires is ground and then two of them would be like steering wheel control one, steering wheel control two and it will measure the resistance. I don't have a plug for that. So we are gonna have to see uh, how this is gonna work. Now um, for testing purposes, we are just gonna straight up Let's see if I can get this. Oh, wow. And I have uh, my friend here helping by uh, disassembling the original bracket so we can transfer that over. All right, so we're gonna plug in the screen. I just have the screen by itself. The shell is on the, just, I just have it out. And I just wanna test the unit before we continue, make sure it works. Um, we can proceed from there. There you go. And we have the screen, nice and beautiful. IPS display, is the, they do claim it as a QLED panel, so it is quantum dot, so it should have great colors. Oh, it powers right up. That is a promising thing. Ooh. So this is generally I doing, we have uh, the best processors um, that is available, we as in them. Um, and then um, we'll, we'll look at all the storage. So I do hear sound, which is great. Uh, if you don't hear sound, check your uh, amp wire. This car doesn't even use an amplifier, it just uses the amp here. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, let's, I know this is crazy, <laughs> let's see this. And um, we can check Bluetooth. Uh, let's see. Oh, it does have steering wheel controls. Oh, it does. Yeah. So let, let's let's just map it. So I was I was curious if it had steering wheel controls. So volume up. We're gonna do volume up here. Volume down. Next track. And backtrack. Uh, mode. Do you want do you want that to be mute or just like mode? Or home. Sure. Um. Where's mode? Mute. Oh, you want to do there, mute? There's a mute. Oh, there's already a mute. So this, this, is, this can be home. Uh, mode is oh, source. yeah, let's do mode source. And then this would be mute. I'm blind. I can't see. This one? No, this. There you go. There you go. Uh, a really cool function, too. I wish my NSX had a steering wheel control. But uh, my car doesn't have a reverse trigger, and I have a backup camera. Mm. You can map a backup camera right there. So let's say uh, this could be like, hey, open the backup camera, and then it'll show the backup camera. And that's cool. So you have that feature right there. I don't know how you guys can see that, but we were really curious if steering wheel control works after you um, program it. You should have it. So why don't you try volume up and down? Great. So we do have steering wheel controls. Um, that's huge. Um, now what we have to do is make sure the most important thing for you was CarPlay. Sure. Yeah, yeah. so if, if it has CarPlay from there, we're, we're going to be set. So, All right, so this wire right here, the blue one, you see how this, this, this is literally the antenna right here? So we're going to have to plug that in. That way we have strong Wi-Fi signal. Now you, you asked me, why is you, are you asking about Wi-Fi signal? Because the first thing that the phone does is they handshake their Bluetooth saying, hey, Bluetooth, okay, good. Now that they did that, it switches over to Wi-Fi for a higher bandwidth signal. And you'll get that higher quality audio from uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And you can test this. You can play on Bluetooth and you'll, you'll notice the sound and then you play on Wi-Fi or AKA sound, um, CarPlay or Android Auto, and you just have a higher bit rate and it just sounds better. And there's also a thing called parking and mic, which we could, we're gonna add later. We're just gonna be testing the most important functionality for me would be the CarPlay, cause that's all I use, honestly. All right, after we hooked up through Bluetooth to the head unit, it uh, I used CarLink, and right now you can see it, but I went in here. CarLink 2.0, and now I have Apple CarPlay. I know, uh, maybe I should do it like this so you guys can see it orientation a little better, but here's Car Apple CarPlay. If you guys don't know what Apple CarPlay is, it uses your phone's internet, it uses your phone's GPS antenna. Everything is through your phone. The only thing it doesn't use is basically 
obviously the sound, but then it uses a Wi-Fi connection to make a connection with your phone. And then it basically, you can call it screen sharing, but it's really streaming data to your head unit and now using the phone as like a dis second display. And this would be the second display on the iPhone. Uh, it's very different from the Android Auto. Uh, and it's very, no, not very different from Android Auto, but it's very different from the Android experience. So like this, this is the Android experience, very Androidy. But when you go to CarLink, this is Apple. Now it's all these apps and um, the way things work is all Apple. So you can see the Apple, the books, the battery life. Mm -hmm. Um, any app that you have installed on your phone is displayed here. None of these apps have to do with what's already inside of this. It's completely separate. Think of it like a VM, a virtual machine or something like that. So it's great there. Carlink 2.0, we're in the business. You can even do a Teams call if you want. <laughs> but yeah, we, Maps and Spotify is what I would use. The, the quality of the audio is great from what I'm hearing initially. Uh, he's like playing classical music. Um, but yeah, we're gonna wrap up this install. It was actually very easy. Um, uh, you only need the Phillips head screwdriver. You only need the Phillips screwdriver to unscrew like a bolt like this and uh, like a pry tool to pry these things. Now, the next thing that we're gonna have to do is transfer these clips over. So the vents, vents and then he had oh, oh you don't even need the cubby it has its own little cubby right there mm -hmm. so you have your own little cubby and this kind of goes where the ac is so yeah just the vents and then remember those yellow clips on the side and i'll show you guys how to do that because it is not um it's not exactly intuitive so i'll show you show you all how to do that but... all right so we have these tabs that we're going to move over from the oem unit right there and we're going to swap it right here now you can see where the tabs are supposed to go um, and we have to remove these. Now there's five tabs in total. Uh, from my experience, it looks like we get pulling these top ones first and then pulling it out and then doing these other ones. You just kind of have to wiggle it out. Um, top ones first is generally the best. And then, oh, there you go. After that, they come out. And you kind of see if you can press it in there. Look at this little bad boy right here. So this kind of clips mm. on to here, just like that. It slides right in. Six of them. I need to pry it. Oh, <laughs> don't lose them. And they just pop in real easy. So. All right. So the only thing we have plugged in right now is the the cables in the back, um, the main harness that powers the unit, and the Wi-Fi antenna. This one, we don't plug into anything. We thought it was steering wheel controls. And uh, at this moment, we could plug in the um, extra USBs and stuff, but the owner opted and he, did, he just wants to keep it clean. No USBs right now. And he didn't really care about the AM FM radio, but the AM FM radio will be right here. So um, we're just gonna attach this to this like so. And it's hard mounted, screws here, screws here, and then we also have two screws. Now we use the existing Subaru um, mounting screws. Be careful to not screw too deep into the screws. So if you use aftermarket ones, what happens is if you keep screwing in, you are gonna screw in and hit like with the Bluetooth. There's like a Bluetooth Wi-Fi chip here, and there's even a capacitor on the other side or vice versa. So make sure you use these very stubby um screws so you don't run into that issue all right so we're just going to mount this bad boy in and uh we'll see you want to do the honors my other side slides in first because it's like a, a mm. smaller crevice after this one sits the other one sits pretty easy all right so we have it installed these vents they work up and down left right close open Let's get this thing started. I'm going to put the keys in, all right? Oh, have it to on. Loads up. I hear the speakers powering up. And there you go. Google. It's amazing. It actually looks really good. 
and it makes this car look really modern. It looks, it makes it look like a brand new Subaru. I always say infotainment ages the car. Like you change the infotainment, you know, generally the engine and stuff is, they're generally car carryovers, but technology moves so fast. So I have this right here. And then we have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. All right, so that's pretty much it. Overall, it was a very easy install. I know um, we didn't install things like the USBs, but if you wanted to install the USBs, you could. You can have it rerouted over here, so you kind of fish the wire, and you kind of bring it down here into the glove box for it to charge. Um, but it was literally, you pop the head unit out, you put those two screws in, and for us, we only plugged in one plug uh, because he only uses Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But uh, in the future, we plan on putting a reverse camera onto this. So that's going to be exciting. We're going to do a reverse camera or he's going to do a reverse camera on his setup. So you would have to add this. But um, just it was just one cable to have it powered the way he wanted it. Of course, if you want extra features like 4G, uh, like a hotspot um, SIM card kind of thing, or if you wanted to add the microphone. Um, from my experience, adding the microphone helps a little bit. So you add the microphone and if you put it like, I don't know, on the steering wheel or something like that, it, it helps a little bit. But uh, when I did my testing, it sounded almost the same. Like there is already a microphone in here. So if someone called him, he just has to kind of lean forward talking to that mic right there and it sounds the same pretty much like just so i would highly suggest maybe skip it out on this it, it is good to have if you want to maybe use it like a lapel mic and have it closer to your mouth that way they can hear you better but there is a microphone already and um of course there was these subwoofers so if you were planning to put like rta jacks for your subwoofers it has that capability again this one Keeping it very stock, very easy, just that one wire, other than the, wi the wire for basically Wi-Fi, because uh, we need that. That way it can talk to the iPhone. And we have it, <laughs> we have the iPhone right there. So very cool. Now overall the fitment, um, let's see. It's very tight. So it's a very tight fitment all around right here. Very clean. And um, let's see over here, very tight right here. Now up top, we did have a, it is flush in terms of um, like your hand. It's actually a little bit more inside than the outer trim, which is nice. Same right here. Um, it's nice. It's, it's inside this thing uh, right here. Uh, it does open up a little bit. Um, you could Dremel some of this stuff, the, the actual trim to have it pop up a little bit more. But for, you know, if, if where we're standing or we're sitting, you don't really see that top gap that much. And it kind of, it kind of suits. I mean, there's gaps everywhere in terms of just Subaru stuff in general. Um, you know, you look at this, it's not, it's not that great either. But, um, yeah, I think the main thing is the color. So, um, this trim right here is a little bit brighter than this. Um... This obviously is a little bit brighter and it has that brush look. So they do have, then they, they go back to the silver color, non-brush. So I guess it kind of matches with the silver. Uh, we'll, we'll let you guys judge to my eye. This is, um, is darker than the, the uh, trim around it. Does it bother me? Not really, but um, it would look better if it matched. If it was brighter, maybe it would hurt your eyes. I don't know, mm. <laughs> but... Um, it's better than if they if they did it matte if they did it this in black, it would, it would look worse than what it is now. So I'm glad that they did paint it silver. So there's that. Anyways, thank you guys for watching.